What is your assessment of the timeline to bring widespread vaccines to the population? Yeah, I think, I think we're talking about a later timeline. Vaccine distribution fundamentally depends on four things. A product that's available, approval, the ability to distribute and administer it, and a public willing to take it. That approval can happen one of two ways. One is an EUA. That does make it possible to have some interim data from one or two of the trials that then has to be reviewed. And you could have a very small number of doses be released, I would say, more in the November to more likely December time frame. The other way is with full licensure. That's something that's going to ha happen next year. So the average person is highly unlikely to uh, uh, access the vaccine dose prior to, uh, at the earliest, the middle of the first quarter of 21, all the way through the year as more manufacturers' data becomes available. So, Doctor, does that mean that when President Trump talks about it's going to come in weeks, it's the former, it's that one vaccine that's still experimental that you can give to a few people, but does that count as what markets really need to pay attention to? Yeah, I can't speak for the markets, uh, but from a scientific point of view, uh, indeed, a vaccine can be released by emergency use authorization. Now, note that an EUA only says that a product may be effective. OK, mm -hmm. we'll know very little about safety at that point, only what's been collected over a few months, which is different than the process, which I've been a part of, of full licensure, which generally takes years and is being compressed into months. In terms of the way that this process works, um, traditionally companies would develop a vaccine, then they would develop the scaling in, in order to roll it out. Those two things have clearly been compressed and are, and are overlapping. Nevertheless, do we require the candidate first before we can start scaling? Or if you think that phase three is going well, can you start scaling before phase three is finished and before you have uh, a, a regulated candidate? Yeah, really excellent question. And it's really more the latter that has occurred. So these manufacturers have been manufacturing and scaling up their supplies. So to some degree, those are available, though it will be an ongoing manufacturing process. Remember, too, these are novel vaccines. These have never been used in humans and certainly not in any kind of mass scale. Some of these require refrigeration. Some uh, have to be kept frozen and some have to be kept ultra cold. And these all uh, increase the logistical difficulties of distributing a vaccine that uh, more than likely will require two doses a month apart. So you, you begin to appreciate the logistical difficulties in not only manufacturing, but storing, then distributing, then administering a vaccine to, you know, upwards of 300 million or more people in the U.S. So let's go to the distribution part a little bit. You said two doses, one month apart. Who keeps track of that? I mean, in theory, I would go to my doctor, my GP, but if we're talking about some kind of mass distribution, that feels more to me like a Walmart parking lot where you go in and get it. Which one is it going to be? And then who keeps track of everything? Yeah, really good question. And it's going to be more akin to the latter, not what you're used to. So in order to quickly make vaccine doses available and administer them in a safe way, given that we're in the midst of a pandemic. The uh, Department of Health and Human Services in the U.S. has released a distribution plan. That plan calls for the development of an IT architecture that will keep track of that. So you might go to your doctor and get dose one. You might go to a school or a pharmacy or a distribution center to get dose two, and they would know about that. In order to do that, what their plan calls for is coordination between CDC, large health care providers, the Department of Defense, and Health and Human Services. How, as a consumer, do I decide which vaccine I want or get? Yeah, I think, uh, number one, you're going you're gonna to want to be informed. And number two, uh, you're going to have to depend on uh, your physician or other experts that you trust, because 
you know, we have some eight, nine vaccines that are in phase three trials, many more to come after that. And again, these will be platforms or vaccine types that the public and even providers are unfamiliar with. I've spent my lifetime studying these vaccines and this virus we've only had in hand for, you know, six, eight months, something like that. So how these vaccines will uh, uh, create efficacy, whether there'll be any safety concerns, how long or durable that immunity will be and what, you know, what vaccine is best suited for what particular type of patient is something I think they're ultimately going to have to depend on their health care provider to understand.